Another killing floor? Oh wait, killing floor two is free for the weekend. That'd be fun. The killing floor franchise for us has always been about that uh, power fantasy. Why does this look so bad again? And true. Oh, I, I remember the killing floor one was one of the first games I got on my. Oh man, one of my first. No, second PCs. My second PC. I got this TF2, Left 4 Dead 2, Killing Floor. It was like there was a winter sale, and there was a free game was Left 4 Dead 2, and just a bunch of zombie games on sale. I just remember going crazy, and this one was very memorable for what he just said. Like I just felt so big on something so small. It was, it was cool. Plus it was, it was kind of gory and horry. I like horror. And Gore has a spot, I guess. The Killing Floor franchise for us has always been about that power fantasy. The feeling that it's almost out of your control, and sometimes is completely out of your control and turns into complete mayhem. I've been making Killing Floor since the beginning. We didn't really have like official titles. I did a lot of the initial game mode prototyping and just anything to get the game up and running. The original Killing Floor we did with 12 or 15 people. Dang! Oh, that's a classic! It was a very grindhouse, dark, gritty survival horror. Back in the day, it's a classic. access to enough people and enough talent to make what you want wasn't there. We had like three months, maybe four Dang. months. There wasn't a lot of polished UI and matchmaking and stuff like that. It was, you know, Leland, you have a week to take each one of these maps Impressive, though. and change as much as you possibly can, right? It was, David, you have a day to make each enemy. Bill, you have a day to animate each enemy. So it was oh, do or die to get that first game done. A couple of weeks before we were due to release, Bill and Dave with their art hats on, got the four of us in a room and went, it's got to look better than this. Um, I was right. Right. Oh, maxed out the credit cards. The bank account has Jesus. one payroll left in it. And that Eesh. goes out on Friday. Yikes. <laughs> There's nowhere else to go. And we released the game. And people loved it. Uh, like, Holy oh, PC discs. Do they still sell these? I can't imagine they still sell PC discs. But probably, maybe. What a time. This shit was pretty cool to me back when DC... Uh, CD discs drives were a thing. I used to love finding random discs in like cereal boxes or whatnot. I think the mummy came. No, it had its own case. It was a Tom Clancy game, came from some random place. Maybe from a cousin in that spot. But there was moments where you could get like a Bionicle game if you bought like a Bionicle movie or a toy, maybe. And there was weird times where you, you bought a t shirt, you got headphones. <laughs> I went a bunch of times, man. And um, people loved it. But that shit was it like, holy sh I kind of missed the disc. It worked. It was a really fun time. It was a very intense deadline. We were much younger. You know, we were all in our 20s at that time, so we had a lot more energy to do that. The Killing Floor 2, we got to step it up a bit. I think we were at about 45, I didn't play this 50 too people much. at that point. I don't even David know Hensley this. was the creative director on the project. I was heavily involved in the animation and all the little details that we didn't feel Jesus. other first-person shooters at that time had. Killing Floor 2 went more of a polished science horror vibe. There's much more weapons science. and classes. You actually have modern server infrastructure. Looking like Blade. Thinking. We had perks, and each one of those perks would have different bonuses that is, for different uh, types of weapons. That is quite honestly, though, whenever I played PS2 games back in the day, and you could create a character, I would always just try to make Blade if I could. Almost always <laughs> i just loved blade at the time he was so fire with the sunglasses There's much more sunglasses the black trench coat with the red like almost like a like an under armor shrink muscle popper you know what i mean for weapons and classes you actually hard. have modern it's just hard. infrastructure with matchmaking we had perks hard. and each one of those perks would have different bonuses for different types of weapons certain different ways to play the enemies move faster the difficulty is more intense it's its own thing i wish to play it that was our first that's it i'm gonna play it the consoles as well console I've been I didn't a fan know of killing floor for quite some time i was working on another game one of the other character artists says there's a game I want to try with you guys. And I was like, all right, like I'm down. I like monsters. So during crunch, that oh, artist whoa. would be like, you're from Georgia, Those right? Would it be crazy if you worked on that one day? So that was my introduction. 
one of my thoughts when I was given the opportunity to lead the team is that Killing Floor was a bit of a cult hit. I know I wanted it to return to this level of horror, have some cult elements, but become a little more mainstream. So we'd be in the office and we'd be working on dry erase boards and it was just basically Dave Hemsley and I kind of talking about what the game Damn. could be. Jesus. Now this is kind of crazy. COVID hit. Oh, <laughs> we're going to work remote. All of a sudden <laughs> there wasn't just... It's kind of crazy, like, the whole evolution of Killing Floor, this is definitely like a step up of production. They already got, like, storyboards and shit, maybe, like, they probably had a good bit for number two, but you can tell they, they were probably running on sticks for the first one, like, shit. It's like it Atlanta, like, Roswell, as this hub for crazy. it, we could open the floodgates to people that wanted to be a part of the team. I was on the team leading the design Shark? for Man Eater DLC. Jaws? And that Aww. took about a year, Man and then I, I came mean, onto the prototype. And nothing wrong with Maneater, but Jaws, I think the first one, we used to have it back on the PS2, and I watched my brother play that so much, uh, it was a classic, it was so good. The same thing. I was on the team, it's like the same game, the design for Pretty Maneater much. DLC, and that took about a year, and shark. then I came onto the prototype for Killing Floor 3. You get to start with an idea, make something a reality, and then play it. Say, hey, do we want to iterate on this more? Oh shit! Like, look at this. Something different. This is some it's development right here. What's fun? What, what works? The fuck? Really set it up to when we moved into production, we knew, for the most part, what we wanted to make and how were we going to make it. Everything's gray box. Just the simplest possible representation of each thing, except gun sights. That has to be accurate. Within a week, I had a pretty strong idea of what the teaser trailer oh. would look like when we first announced. It was still feeling like a Killing Floor title, while at the same time elevating it. I think Tripwire's definitely the house that Killing Floor built at this point. There were fun things about the scrappier days. I think as we've grown, we've kept the heart of what makes Tripwire special while also becoming more professional, having access to better technology and more skilled employees. It's been 10 years. Let's step the game right up um, and give people some new challenges. <laughs> Yeah, it's fun. I mean, I've always been a fan of the first one. You know, I never really played two too much, but three it does look interesting. I mean, it looks polished compared to what I've played mostly. <laughs> so you know, it'd be kind of fun to play that again. I want to play number two right now, actually, or maybe I install number one. I don't know. I kind of want to play one regardless.